This is a spoiler warning. In this show, we'll be discussing the Zygon invasion. So if you haven't seen episode seven of series nine, go have a watch, then come back here. This is the fan show. <laughs> I'm Crystal D, he's Luke Spillan, and welcome to The Fan Show. Joining us this week to discuss the Zygon invasion is TV editor of Digital Spine Morgan Jeffrey and writer of Doctor Who books and audios, most recently the 10th Doctor and Donna Big Finish audio stories, Jenny Colgan. Welcome guys. Hello. Hello. Alright, so let's talk about uh, our favourite moments. What were yours? Anything with Zygons. I do Zygons. love Zygon. Yep. Uh, just oh, any oh. any scenes with the Zygon. I was really happy to see back the kind of the icky Zygon biological uh, tech. Yeah. <laughs> Doctor's fondling of the fronds. Yeah. So that was a nice yes. little callback I thought to uh, yep. terror of the Zygons back in the seventies. I loved seeing that back. Yeah. Yeah. Big red monster. In the last ten minutes with Clara. Every single second. Evil I am, Clara. Do you know I have seen a million TV shows. I have seen a million thrillers. I've seen all of the X Files. I still. They've turned bad. <laughs> <laughs> I did not yeah. suspect a thing. I yeah. loved it. It carried me right along. What about you? What was your favourite moment? Do you know I'm gonna have to say the Clara reveal. The, yeah. the, the Bonnie reveal. Yeah. Just because it was so unexpected mm. and she does evil so well. Mm, absolutely. And she's just so good at it. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna have to say that. I really love the scene with the uh, soldier and he's confronted by his mother or, yes. or someone oh, who yeah. thinks is his mother. And that scene just kind of came out of nowhere, really mm. took me aback because that's really kind of dark and, and bleak and quite, quite troubling and mm. really affecting, I thought. I love that. Well, I guess this is the long-awaited sequel to the events of Day of the Doctor. Uh, many fans felt that, that the Zygon peace pot strand was underserved in the Day of the Doctor. Gallifrey Forever 97 says, Love the pre-title sequence of this episode. Really tied in Day of the Doctor and this episode like a set of handcuffs. And Louis Ohu says, A brilliant story with a thrilling cl uh, cliffhanger. Seriously, I think I might have regenerated once or twice watching it. So guys, was this a loose end worth tying up? I think so. I mean, the Zygons, you know, I was quite excited to see the Zygons back in the 50th. Yeah. But, you know, there was, obviously it's the 50th, so there was so much else going on. You had, you know, multiple Doctors and the Time War and Daleks. And obviously, you know, there's so much spectacle. And for me, the Zygons did, uh, you know, fade into the background a little bit. So this feels like, you know, a, a, a proper Zygon story, a full-blooded Zygon story. It's the kind of the sequel to Terror of the Zygons that we've been waiting 40 years for, I think. Yeah, I thought it, it, that was exactly it. After Day of the Doctor, you did feel, oh, there was another story to be told there. Mm. And we've waited a while for it now so it was so satisfying to see it yeah. come to play and it was it is a great story idea so it's you wouldn't want that to go to waste i was so excited oh, to big, see big red monster that turns into your mum eh? yeah yeah <laughs> exactly i think stephen moffat said that at the time after the 50th he said you know that that wasn't really a zygon story that was yeah. just a story with the zygons in it yeah whereas yeah. this is a zygon adventure yes yeah. that's, that's what we want do you know what i really liked about it actually is um the scale of it yeah it Huge, and we haven't yeah. seen a real big. There's 20 million of them. I mean, from a writer's perspective, yeah, <laughs> so yeah. it's really difficult. <laughs> can, we, can it all just take place in an underwater base? Yeah, <laughs> and um, you know, just they, they 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 really set the bar high in terms of what they had to do, and yeah. they went out. I love the location work. I like mm. oh, it's in nine different countries, including yeah. a made up political dodgy one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that for me, it's ambitious. It's incredibly ambitious and I'm really like, enjoying that. Well, as you say, this episode takes place on a global scale. There's so much going on. And apart from season finales, we've not really had anything like this since uh, the Rebel Flesh and the Almost People in, in 2011. So was it satisfying to, to go back to a big, you know, full scale monster block par uh, buster two-parter? I really enjoyed it. I th you know, I think with the two parters this series, uh, they've been trying to do something slightly different, and so each part has been quite decidedly uh, different. You know, with the, with the first two episodes and then episode three and four, there was always like a, a location shift or a shift in time. Whereas this feels like it's using the two parter format as a way to just tell a story on a really huge scale yeah. and to, you know, as I say, it's not a great deal of setup. So we're straight in there and then we're zipping all around the world and it's just really ambitious and, and fast paced as well. I thought it was fantastic on that level. And almost not see it through, like, as much as I loved it in Russell's era, just like lots of different news reports at the Taj Mahal <laughs> and the Sydney Harbour Bridge. And, oh, I miss like, those. I, mean, I, <laughs> miss, I, I miss, miss Trinity Wells. I miss, I miss Trinity Wells. Well. Well. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Yeah. Trinity yeah. Well. so much. Yeah. What is she up to now? <laughs> but it was nice to actually see it happen in the different countries and actually follow the story there as opposed to just news flashes. Yeah, I miss those. <laughs> I miss those. I think we can have a bit yeah. of both, you know, yeah, yeah, contemporary both. pop stars and politicians and commenting Trinity on the Zygon well. oh, invasion. Yeah, Paul I miss, I miss yes, those sort I of, yes. those montages. Really yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's a very nice cosy BBC thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sci-fi often plays about, uh, about with things that are happening um, and, and various modern issues. Um, and now Doctor Who hasn't really done that in a while. Um, you know, here in this episode, we've got Zygon training camps, we've got hostage and execution videos. 
radicalisation and the Doctor trying to prevent war. Um, so do you like it when Doctor Who reflects real world, world scenarios um, or should Doctor Who stay clear of this kind of stuff? I love it. I think it's like Doctor Who is like, a, because it's gone on for so long, it's almost like a time capsule sometimes in periods of history. If you go back to whether it's, you know, 60s black and white stories of visions of the future, or whether it's the 70s and you look at stories like The Green Death or you've got The Sunmakers about taxes or minor strikes. There is so much of that in Doctor Who. And even recently, The Bells of St. John, I think we'll look back on that and do, oh, Wi-Fi. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and wait, you know, all the chips in our minds. You know. Like something like that will come back one day. But this was great to see an injection of, of what's going on in the world at the moment, what is yeah. important and very, um, very relevant at the moment. So it was fantastic. Oh, it wasn't subtle. <laughs> no, yes. not at all. Yeah. I, I did feel it was occasionally a little on the nose. You know, yeah. Um, in, 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 and a little, possibly a little bit divisive. But, but, but yes, I, again. It was, and it is for, you know, you've got to remember that kids are watching Doctor Who, so sometimes, that's, that's you know, right, it's yeah. good for these themes mm. to be kind of broad and maybe a little on the nose mm, because, yes. you know, it's communicating uh, a very important message mm. to very young mm. viewers. And as you say, it's not the first time Doctor Who's done it. You know, he had the Happiness yes. Patrol in the 80s yeah. and that was yeah. about kind of it, politics. It's, it's what sci-fi does, really, yes. whenever yeah, you look absolutely. back on any sci-fi for more than five months ago it's a simple description of where we are yeah, yeah. and I, I loved it it was one of the things that really took me by surprise mm. about this episode was the fact that yeah. it's, it's really about you know um tolerance and acceptance and extremism and terrorism and i was like whoa that's, that's yeah. quite heavy for doctor who well ingrid oliver is back as fan favorite osgood although she is a hostage for a lot of the episode the who lock lover says osgood is great she basically represents a doctor who fandom with the way she dresses and reacts and a doctor who fan says loved a new outfit however the tension is being lost a bit with everyone dying and coming back to life all the time um so guys did you enjoy seeing her again I did. I liked with that uh, with that cosplay element as well. How when you had the two Osgoods, you had like two different cosplayers. Yeah. <laughs> there was, like, yeah. there was yeah. you know a Matt Smith cosplayer yeah. and a Sylvester McCoy <laughs> cosplayer. Uh, yeah. No, I love yeah, that. I... When's she gonna wear the cord? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I want to see Colin Baker next oh, time. I, Sick I, want, to to I want the cord. Yeah. Yeah. She just needs a cravat or something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she needs to come back just for that. I think. Just yeah. the cord. Yeah. <laughs> Colin Baker coat, please. Yeah. yeah, I love Osgood. I think she's great. I think it's fantastic to see her back. I do see a lot of people who are like, oh, bringing her back to life but I mean Stephen has said that this was always an intention it completely makes sense and yeah there were always two of them set up we saw one of them die and that has made this story more interesting yeah I think yeah. it's too good a character to leave yeah, dead, I, right? yes. <laughs> I, I think they may or may not have been a long-term plan yes. but yeah. I, I think the outpouring of, of love from the second she appeared yeah. yeah and I was really gutted genuinely gutted when she was yeah yeah her, even though it was no, cool the way too. that they did it so yeah no mm. I, I think she needs to be there and yeah. it, it's funny as well because I went back to Dare the Doctor recently and I watched it and I actually thought, oh, this is her first story. She's actually only been in it. Like, yeah. Dare yeah. the Doctor. She's in it for like six minutes. And, yeah. And, yeah and, but I felt like there is something, isn't there? Like maybe it's because because uh, Kate had been in it before, but you just felt like Osgood had always been yeah. there. Mm -hmm. It's funny because, you know, a lot of people say that, you know, um, she should be a companion. Mm. Others say that she, because she is a fan of the Doctor and she dresses like the Doctor, it might not work. I mean, what are your opinions? What do you think should be good? I think it might be too much, mine. It's yeah. almost like if one of us got to be a companion. You know, <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, Doctor, you know, <laughs> pull the helmet regulator. You know, oh, let's see the Daleks. You know, yeah, yeah. Just be terrible. Just show me your yeah. sonic screwdriver collection. Yes, that's not exactly. actually X in the title <laughs> at any point. Have you recorded your adventure of the power of Daleks? Um, <laughs> like, no, no, no. It would be, it would be terrible. So, oh, uh, so but, like, I, know, I completely agree. But, but yeah. we all well, want I, I would love her just in unit every so yes. I, I'd love her like Q yeah. in in the Bond films. Yeah, exactly. so I just, I just, yeah. I'd like her to just always be there. Yeah. But it's not about her. She's yeah. just there yeah. telling yeah. us it's always I like the idea of her and Kate becoming sort of the new unit family, the new kind of Brigadier and Benton and Yates. Yeah. And because yeah. this this story in particular I felt had really had a strong kind of 70s John Pertwee mm -hmm. vibe. Mm -hmm. And I love yeah. that era of the show. So yeah. I'd, I'd be happy if they, you know, pop up every once in a while, the doctor yeah. revisits Earth and they're always there to back him up. I'd like yeah. that. Osgood is called out as um the, the third hybrid we've had yep. um yep. this series, which it seems to be a thing now definitely a um, thing now. where do you think this is headed i don't know i mean are we, is it going to be some sort of maybe a moment with clara because keep talking Ooh, about how clara, does, clara who well clara who like, yeah. a, like a new dr donna yeah. because there have been references to how um clara is becoming more and more like the doctor and how he's kind of shaping her and and you know in, in the travels in the tardis and whether or not that's a good thing so i think i think it's it's you know we know jenna coleman's leaving i think that hybrid thing is going to mm. somehow play into yeah. clara's exit in some way Mm. Yeah, that's a theory. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm very much enjoying her. Yeah, in, in tandem with that, I'm very much enjoying the uh, the white shirt, top button done up 
She's starting to, uh, she's starting to cosplay. Doctor, yeah. 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 yeah, which I thought was lovely. Well, the unit soldiers fall into the Zygon's trap. Um, they send Kate, a scientific advisor, not an agent or soldier, to New Mexico on her own without backup. Um, and Clara leads the way and is cleverer than all of the unit soldiers uh, put together, pretty much. Uh, Gary Mod says, it's annoying that they're trained soldiers who knew they were going against shapeshifters. They could have just arrested them. Uh, and River Song 721 says, imagine you were forced to shoot someone who looks like your mother and was that convincing? Well, when did UNIT become so useless? It was, UNIT were always kind of useless. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, yeah. I, love, I love UNIT, but yeah. the fact is they always needed the doctor to get Absolutely. them out of, out of scrapes. You know, yeah. the Brigadier started off as quite a kind of serious minded military officer and then throughout the 70s became like <laughs> increasingly more uh, ludicrous and useless yeah. as much yeah. as I love that character. Yeah. So I, I, I don't think it's, you know, the beginning of a trend really. So I feel like they've got worse. So <laughs> they've, they've always been, a as you say, they've always been a little bit, you know. They, they Without the doctor, useless. they are useless. But yeah. now they're just, you know, they, they, they can't do anything. Because yeah. <laughs> you know, they used to be, UNIT used to feel, feel very large. Like it felt, you know, uh, back during the you know, David Tennant's era, um, UNIT felt like a massive operation. Mm. And, you know, Journey's End, Stolen Earth, and Mar Martha is working for them and everything. It, it felt, you know, and obviously Captain uh, Magumbo and, and mm. uh, you had Lee Evans as um, Colonel Malcolm. Mace in Sometimes Stratagem. Yeah, there's yeah, so many. So many different, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. We, we were seeing so many different teams and so many members of staff. Mm. and. And um, they seemed quite on it, and and now uh, they needed the doctor's help. But now they're they've just had a restructure, really. I think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think it's been yeah. cut Women back. Yeah. 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 It's twenty fifteen. There's been yeah. cut back. Yeah. <laughs> that is the thing. When when you have recurring characters, it kind of it makes it feel a little smaller. But then I like that because it also gives it that cozy unit family feel. Cozy's yeah. maybe not the word you'd want to apply yeah. to yeah. a you know a, a hot shot military yeah. organization. Yeah. 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 But I like the cozy unit family. So yeah. I'd, I'd probably sign Kate off for executive strengths. <laughs> she's had a tough old time. Yeah, she's had a tough, I don't uh, think she's had like She's seen her dad turned into a lots, cyber man. I yeah, mean, come on. That's yeah. true. She's got a lot to live up to. So, <laughs> and especially if she has ridiculously large pictures of her father around ever intimidating her. <laughs> it's a lot of pressure, you know? It it's a lot of pressure. Briggs always yeah. watching. Yeah. For me, the bit that I didn't like, I think could have deserved a bit more of a reaction, was when the Zygon changes in front of her and she's just like, <laughs> oh, it's a Zygon just transforming. Seen it all. Okay. Seen it all. Blase. You know? Yeah. I mean, maybe she has. Maybe Once she you've has seen your dad all, turned you know. into a Cyberman, yeah. it's yeah. like, eh. Oh, no, I was going to say, they're very good actors, aren't they? They're very good at. The Zygons? Yeah. They are. Oh, I'd very love good. to see their theatre productions that yeah. they do on their spaceships. Like Zygon Hamlet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, that'd be amazing. Yeah. <laughs> now, personally, I, I love Earth Invasion. So when this, I heard about this episode, I was like, oh, yes, can't wait. Fantastic. Um, but what. I think was lacking for me was just the amount of um, uh, members of the public and things reacting to things because what I really miss about you know um, previous episodes when spaceships appear in the sky you always have you know people in the street running and you know one hysterical woman you know oh my god yeah, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. and um, for me um, it felt like it took place within their world that you know the doctor Osgood Kate Stewart Clara and um, <clears throat> you know like with the news reports I felt there, there was a little bit of uh, lack of connection for me um, d I don't know if you felt this did you feel a bit disconnected from it I, I like it better this way I like yeah. the oh, idea that the government is trying to fight a plot that we shouldn't know about and, mm. and, and, and certainly that kind of does tie in with the idea that government keeps telling us that they are constantly fighting off plots that we don't know about uh, from terrorists I quite like that, but I, did, I wrote a sci-fi book last year where there is an alien vision that they have to try and keep from people. Because what, the problem, dramatically speaking, from a writer, is once you get into everything, it doesn't really matter in Doctor Who, but it can do. You know, you've, you've got stuff like stock markets and panicking and suicide. And, you know, it gives you a whole yeah. bunch of Independence Day crud that you may or may not be ready to deal with, whereas the claustrophobia of, uh, I really felt with Rebecca Front's character, is like there's no one to sort this out, there is no one else oh, to do it. Yeah. I think really added to it, I liked it. Oh, yeah. I see it differently now. Yeah, yeah no, yeah. I do, yeah. And, you know, this yeah. was the invasion. The invasion has now happened. So possibly next week in the Zygon inversion, maybe we'll see a little bit more of that, you know, just general panic and, you know, people well, running through the streets. Yeah, 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 that's yeah. true. That's yeah. interesting. Oh, I look forward to finding out. So uh, at the end of this episode, we get to see evil Clara Zygon, which is pretty awesome in my eyes. Um, I didn't see it coming. We asked fans if they were surprised. Um, Patrick White says, didn't see it coming at all. It hit me in the face after the tensest episode long build up I've seen in a long time. And Michael Barton says, uh, on seeing Clara with a rocket launcher in the previews, it occurred to me that it wasn't really Clara's field of expertise. <laughs> That's true. 
Um, She's a school teacher. She doesn't have a lot of yeah. uh, expertise <laughs> with rocket launchers, as far as oh, we're aware. London school, so. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, discipline. Yeah, that would be incredible. Well, yeah, did you did you enjoy Evil Zygon, Clara? I loved it, and I think you could tell Jenna Coleman was enjoying herself yeah. as well. You know, the moment when there's the the reveal that oh, it's the human Clara that's uh, that's trapped, mm -hmm. and she just kind of like raises an eyebrow a little bit and you, you could tell yeah. she was yeah. she was I think she looked that. straight down the lens at one point <laughs> almost yeah it's a bit more of the fourth wall breaking in, in Doctor Who series I like nine that. plus I loved I don't know why there was just something about the old-fashioned dish tech the real kind of cold war I'm just gonna put this big bazooka yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm a tiny girl with a bazooka and it's first time yeah. she pulls out a gun you just think <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, ever since I'd seen that moment in the trailer, Clara with a bazooka, I was excited. I was like, yeah. well, however that's going to be built up to, I want to know yeah. how yeah. that happens. Yeah. And, and now Because I, I thought, because she keeps surprising us, you know, one minute she's uh, doing this, next minute she's teaching Taekwondo. Oh, I didn't know she could do that. <laughs> so I thought, oh, magically, Clara is, because she's uh, the impossible girl, yeah. and very good at everything. Yeah. <laughs> I thought, oh, yeah, so of course she's learned how to shoot a gun, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so that really took me by surprise. I, I did. Yeah. Seems out of character, but hey. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But she's great though, uh, you know, she's, uh, I, I want to see more next week. Yeah. And it's interesting watching it the second time round because now I've noticed yeah. when she changes that mm. she puts her hair back mm. and you can see that actually in top of the delivery of the lines, you're like, yeah. oh, there, she there is, is a Zygon. There is a beautiful yeah. moment as well. I mean, I particularly love the direction of this episode and there is an, uh, a beautiful moment um, where right before the, uh, the, when she would have been taken by a Zygon, uh, there is a scene where she's looking at the mother or the father in the room and there is a mirror uh, on the wardrobe and it reflects where the other Clara will be stood. I presume that's intentional. But I thought that was a nice mm. foreshadowing when I watched it the second time. And I noticed when I watched it the second time, you know, uh, Zygon Clara, she mentions uh, truth and consequences. The, the na she knows the yes. name of the she town. Does, and, isn't it? and at the time she's like, oh, uh, trivial pursuit. And I was like, yeah. oh, come on, that's a, that's a bit dubious. But actually there's a reason why she knows yes. that because she's a Zygon, and of course. It off. It's, so, yeah. it's so great, I love I love enjoying a story all completely new when you watch it the second time round because yeah. you've got something to look out for. Anna. Can you imagine if the Doctor got copied and we Ooh. had an evil Doctor? Oh. Would the Zygons be, be able to? Re would they read his current incarnation? I don't would know it? if they could. They well, yeah. could it blow their minds? Yeah, it might do. Oh. Imagine if you had just like all twelve or thirteen Doctors just merged <laughs> into yeah. one. It would be a, like, 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 one a, Zygon, a strange hodgepodge. Yeah. yeah, I believe that will be the hundred year anniversary. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Hybrid that's coming. The, the ultimate hybrid. That is the ultimate the hybrid, hybrid. Yeah. but still doctors. wearing question mark underpants. Yes, yes. <laughs> always. Yeah, in oh. all incarnations. Yeah. Well, I guess we'll find out next week if it's truth or consequences or question mark underpants. Thank you so much, guys, for joining us, and we'll leave you with an intro to the Zygon inversion. I love the Zygons. Wherever I go, they go. Wherever they go, I go. You have no idea who's going to die! I rather like Zygons. One that I think is a great monster design. I think they're, they're beautiful. They're genuinely terrifying. I find them absolutely horrific. The ceasefire will stab! So if you've got a shapeshifter, that means they can switch into the face of a brilliant actor who can then do all the remoting with a normal human face and then switch back to rubber blobbiness when, when we want to get the terrifying action. I had to play two Osgoods, and one is Igor and one isn't, and the viewers don't know which is which. The Osgood box can start the war. But keen-eyed viewers should be able to tell which is which. <laughs> <laughs>